Hello world, Great Giza Pyramid. We're going to review a couple of the lesser known parts, this being the entrance, or the uh, what they like to call the main entrance. Uh, you notice that it uh, doesn't really look fitable for humans, and you have to remember that it was buried under rock. So, and uh, they say that it was to hide it, but uh, well, I have my other theories, and you'll see them shortly. Another room that you don't see a whole lot is this way down at the bottom of the uh, pyramid. Uh, we call it the uh, subchamber. It's a good name for it. And uh, it has a funny shape, and it's all square in form, except for the what they call the unfinished room. And uh, well, we can put eyes on that. You can see why they call it the unfinished room. And uh, well, you'll see more about this room very shortly. But one thing that's very hard to see from all those pictures is the granite rocks that are hiding in those rooms. Everything else in and around them is pretty much limestone, very non-conductive, but you got two granite rocks, one there, one there. And if you want to put eyes on that, that's one down there. And if you turn around and look the other way, it's hanging out down there in the hall, and the other one's hanging out over here. So, one other room that a lot of people don't spend, spend a lot of time caring about is the grotto. Um, now they say this was a well, but uh, yes, it was a well, but uh, it wasn't for anybody escaping or anything of that. And we'll see why. But it has another granite rock in there. We'll call that granite rock B, just in case we need to refer to it. Now, when we add water, got to remember that the uh, water is going to be filtering through those rocks. Uh, that way, sticks, stones, fish. I don't know about stones that float, but sticks and fish and things like that won't get in there. And it ensures that the air has a way out. That's what that uh, flow control valve is right there. It ensures that the air, or later, to be seen, the oxygen has a way out. The water is going to flow down into the system very easily. And it's going to fill up the uh, bottom chamber there, no big deal. It's going to continue to fill up, and it's going to fill its way into the grotto, where it's going to fill up to the top of the entranceway to the door, because water can't go any higher than that. It's going to spill into the room, you know, pushing out all the oxygen that's in there, covering the rock, and it's going to work its way up. I'm not sure it's going to be able to go any higher than that because of the lock system, but just in case there's amounts of pressure, let's just bring it all the way up here to water level and watch the system come to play. Now what's going to happen down here is you're going to use some uh, physiostatic static electricity. Now this doesn't give you a lot of electricity. You're not going to have enough to do any arc welding or anything like that. But you have enough there that's just slightly above, I'm going to say around 2 volts at least, but it only takes 1.3 volts for electrolysis. So that's enough voltage to start electrolysizing water, which is basically where you break the water, you take the hydrogen and the oxygen, the, you know, the uh, dihydrid, di was it, di <laughs> dihydride monoxide, and you're going to break it into hydrogen and oxygen. Poof! Two oxygen molecules for every oxygen. Two, two hydrogen for every oxygen. That's why it's uh, H2O. Anyway, so that's going to happen a whole lot. The hydrogen's going to be bubbling off that A rock, and the uh, oxygen's going to be bubbling off the... Uh, sorry. Hydrogen's going to be bubbling off the C rock, and the oxygen's going to be bubbling off the A rock. Cathode and anode, if you want to know their real names. And it's going to be collected across the top of the uh, ceiling there in that pool, that little cut out there. It's going to work its way back to that bubble there, and it's going to work its way back to that bubble there. And that guy, he's standing right about here, and uh, he's looking out the hole right where the hydrogen would be going. And that's going to work its way up to the top of the king's chamber, but we'll get to that. It comes out where all the dust and seeds and stuff that they can't figure out where they came from came from. Now the uh, oxygen is going to work its way across the top of this shaft, not actually going into the other shaft, and that will wind up being important when you see how the whole system comes into play. The oxygen works its way up that shaft until it gets to the top, up here, where the flow valve there and the uh, hanging pivoted door, which we'll get into when we discuss that area in detail, uh, that works as the flow control and makes sure that there's enough pressure in there to build back, to, to build a little bit of back pressure, which is going to bring the water level down. 
when it uh, brings the water level down low enough, it's going to put the water in the grotto here into a vacuum because the way this room is engineered with there being a little um, a ring right here, it makes it so that the water level cannot drop down. No oxygen can get into the room to let this water level drop down, hence this water becomes suspended or a negative negative pressure or vacuum, whichever term you like. But either way, that makes that whole shaft a vacuum, and in doing so, takes the electrolysis, and since this now, oh, I didn't tell you that, water in a vacuum or negative pressure is easier to crack, takes slightly less voltage to crack than water at a standard pressure. So the negative, this being the um, antenna still, that this is the negative side of the, the picture, and this being the positive side, it's going to yield some of its electrolysis energy to up here, which is going to start bubbling out some oxygen there. It's going to add a little bit of pressure to the room, just enough to let the oc to drop the water level down to let some oxygen bubble out through the top of that room, but not enough to let the water fall. It'll still hold that in a negative pressure. Now, if too much oxygen is coming off of here and not enough there, it's going to allow this water level to go up a tiny bit, and when it goes up a tiny bit, this will no longer be under negative pressure, which will then divert its energy back to here, which will then create more oxygen here, which will fill that, which will bring the water level back down. And these two are going to be playing a little bit of a ballet until they become to a happy equilibrium, and they're a control valve for each other. Now that's going to fill the oxygen up there until it gets to the top of the king's chamber. We're going to look more closely at how these two gases come into play. Now this is Chris Dunn. He uh, has done an, an intense amount of work on this pyramid, and um, using his work and his finding that uh, the Grand Gallery and the what they like to call the King's Chamber, I like to call it either the Combining Room or Compounding Room, and you'll see both reasons why later. But um, I believe that they wind up doing some, uh, well, I'll call it sonic welding at this point, but we'll get to that later as the, as the next part of the system gets into play, but not in this video. The top of the King's Chamber up here is where all the hydrogen is going to come flooding up into, and when it gets up there, since it's going to have such a large updraft, at, uh, at least when the system is fully functional, it will drop all the seeds and shells and dust that it brought up with it, and that is how the seeds and shells and dust wind up being up at the top. Because uh, the water isn't perfectly pure when it filters through the rocks. Anyway, the hydrogen is going to fill from the top down, because it's going to have the hydrogen still coming up from the bottom, constantly filling it. It's going to build up enough pressure here. It's going to work its way around the outside of the king's chamber, which uh, the king's chamber itself is kind of completely enclosed, but uh, those caverns and stuff up top do have little connecting tunnels and tubes. The hydrogen comes in from behind the king's, sorry, behind the, uh, the mixing rock there, the churning rock, and you'll see why I call it that shortly, but it comes up from behind there, and you can see where I feel it would have come from. And the reason why that area of the wall is not as scarred, is not as charred and burnt, is because the hydrogen was freshly coming into the room, which kept the reaction from actually affecting the walls in that location. And well, we'll get into what action there that, that I'm planning for the third video, actually. Second video will talk about how the system comes to full pressure, and then the third video I'm going to, in the series I believe, also doesn't take me more, it's going to talk about how they were actually using it to generate electricity, but I'm skipping ahead a lot here, so let's just look at the system. The oxygen comes up from the bottom, as we discussed, and both of them will be venting out the only shaft that actually exited the system. Every other shaft, the two in the Queen's Chamber and this one, were plugged. This one winds up being your control. It needs to be a pure hydrogen conduit, and we'll discuss that later in future videos. We're not going to get into the electrical part of the system yet. So 
So the hydrogen, which is building up pressure in the top, and the oxygen, which is coming across the floor, they're going to work their way into this system where the oxygen flowing into the rock and going down because it's heavy, and the hydrogen being pushed in from the top and then flowing out because it's light in comparison to the oxygen when it hits it. Those two churning together are eventually going to make droplets of water, which will fill this and then spill out onto the floor of the king's chamber and down through there, out the uh, pre-chamber or ante-chamber, down through the center of the grand gallery, spilling over down there. There's oops, people there, so you get an idea of the size. So when it comes down, basically it's going to spill into here, and that guy's standing right here, and it's going to spill into that floor, floor there, and it's going to fill that pool of water. Keep in mind that this hole really isn't there. Some grave robbers dug into there, not knowing that this actually was a tool, not a grave, but we won't get into that right now. And then the water is going to, well, this is all covered up, but that's the hole that goes down to the grotto. You can see it here on the side. Nowadays, it seems that it's all boxed in. We've also dyed the uh, walls there, so stained the walls, so you can't tell where the scorch marks and stuff were. But these two pictures were the ones that I came across, and both of them show that there's a little ridge there. That ridge is going to keep that water from spilling down into that one leg, and we'll get into what that leg does and how it came into be. Well, again, like I said, when we show how the system came to full pressure. But this water is going to spill over down and go back down to the grotto, where it's going to pass uh, by the oxygen that's going up and spilling back into the pool of water, which is going to then get cracked and go through this whole system again. So that is the basic setup and the flow of the fluids through the system. And I'll give you a little hint here, going back up to that. What you see here that I'm going to show you and I'm going to stick with is that this rock that they broke up through when they came from the grotto, from the top and from the outside, it's going to look like it's mirror image on the other side, which means right here is going to be one of those little wells that uh, you have little running wells coming down the side, and I'll, like this right here, and I'll explain what and why that was in the, that would be in the third one, because that has to deal with the power side of it, but it'll have a spillway which will cap off at just below this ridge, and that will maintain a set flow, and then once the flow of, of the water is faster than it will spill over there, that is when it will start to fill up this leg. And until that flow is more than it will able to spill under that ridge and it starts to fill up the system, and like I said, when the system comes to pressure, that is when things will happen. Now, this water, after it fills up, it's actually going to come up and spill over the spillway down through that hole, and the oxygen at all times is going to be coming up and into here. And it's doing that so that when the oxygen is coming out, it's going to be coming into down here and eventually bubbling up through water. And that's going to be a, uh, well, give, a little, give you a little hint, it's going to be a break between the waters here and the waters there. And the, the two sides are going to pretty much be a mirror image of each other optically, unless you know there's a, uh, a little vent down there. So it maintains a symmetry, and that's uh, very important as the system comes to full pressure, and then you actually see what it's doing. If you have any questions or problems, please contact me. I'll be uh, more than eager to hear from you. And, um, well, there you go. Thank you.